Today, we're going to talk about creating really great visual content for your social media strategy, okay? For use in your blogs, on Twitter, on Pinterest, wherever it might be, you know, the key is to always be creating visual content that's compelling and really interesting and sets you apart from your quote unquote competition. Now, the first thing that we're going to look at is this graph from Adobe. And basically, it was based on a survey of all their customers asking them, what do you think is the most important tactic for optimizing content on social media? And if you look, uh, the first item here, it says use images or photos. So basically, marketers agree that images and photos are very important. They rank that much more important than hashtags. Uh, specific groups or users, call to actions, image size for each network, using videos, limiting the number of characters. Okay, So you can see this is really just a, a kind of a ranking of what the most critical tactics are for creating you know, successful, effective social media content. Okay, So we're going to jump right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go step by step through each website. And I have several websites we're going to go through. I'll go through each one very quickly. Okay. The first one is Photolia. So this is a website of, of royalty free stock photos. You do have to pay for them. They can be as cheap as a dollar. They can be as expensive as $30. It depends upon the image. Basically what you do is you buy a bunch of credits and then you deduct credits as you use images. Now the case where you would use this is not where you're simply posting stories on Pinterest, pictures on Pinterest or Facebook or tweeting out images and so forth. Those should be your images representing your cause, your outcomes. You want to share pictures and stories of outcomes because that directly influences whether people volunteer or donate to your organization. Okay. So that's, you know, you wouldn't use Photolia for that. But what you would use Photolia for is if you're trying to create a landing page that is going to look really great and you just need a high quality, professionally produced image, you can simply go to Photolia, search certain keywords. It may take you a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of time to find one image that, or, you know, a couple images that might work. Depends upon the campaign. But as you can see, these are high quality images that are very, very inexpensive. The next one is Unsplash. So what I like about Unsplash is that they post 10 photos every 10 days. And these are under a license called Creative Commons Zero, which means that the artists who have created this image, they said, you know what, we don't even want credit for these images. We just want these images to be on the public domain. You can take them and you can use them. Okay. So what you do here is you just go to Unsplash. If you subscribe here, you're going to get notifications about the photos. Again, 10 photos every 10 days. Spectaculous is a website where you're trying to answer the question, geez, what other colors are matching this picture? So we found a really great image or we've produced a great image and we want to add text. We want to add a border, but we need to know what the colors are you can just upload an image. So basically what it does is it creates a palette of colors that will match the image. So here's the image that I uploaded, the selection of colors that will go well with this image. If you have an image that you're trying to um, put on an iPad, well, there's a website called Place It. It's basically a background and you can simply drag your image here. Okay, so I'll just upload an image and we have our image that's placed in this image right here. So then we could download it. In other words, if you have some sort of webinar that's coming up or let's say a membership site where people log in and they create an account and they get all this really great stuff for you, you know, within your organization, you can simply create images that communicate the use of that resource. Another one is easily. It's free. And what's great is that you can simply pick themes that comes with a lot of different themes that you can use and you can simply pick a theme. So basically you can go through and you get a, you get what, what I see as a 90% head start in creating a really, really great uh, infograph in this case. So this is really for creating very simple infographs. So we can take any infograph, we can say, oh, you know what, this looks pretty cool because we're talking about going back to school and some of the things that kids have to deal with when they go back to school. So this might be really great. It gets us 90% there. And what we can do is we can take this template and we can edit it and make it our own. So we can go in and we can edit the text. All right. And 
then we can simply um, you know, make this image our own. We can drag and drop other images, we can change the title, download it, and then we're good to go. PictoChart is great if you are trying to create infographics. So this is a great resource for infographics, and they have templates. Again, same thing with Easily. They give you templates that you can start with. So the idea here is that you're trying to think of something that's going to be 90% of what you're trying to communicate. And what's great about PictoChart is that they keep creating brand new templates over and over again. They do have free ones. They have pro ones. And what it does is it, it basically eliminates the graphic designer that you'd, you'd have to pay a couple thousand dollars to create an infographic like this. You go here, you'd simply pay the license uh, fee. I'm not sure what the pricing is, and I'm not going to get into that right now. You can look it up yourself, but you have these templates. So this allows you for very, very short money to be able to create infographics on a monthly basis even, okay, depending upon resources. You can create an infographic once a month that's really going to focus on your communications goal for that month. Another great resource, PicMonkey, which many of you may already be familiar with. Uh, this is what I describe as an online version of Photoshop. So you can simply upload a photo, you touch up photos, and under design, which is relatively new, you can even pick specific templates. Now, Over is an iPhone app. It's also a, you know, an Android app, and you can look at it, you can get it in the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. You can take your existing photos that you've taken, say, at an event or just out and about. You take a picture, it really captures an outcome or captures a really powerful story. You want to add a little bit of text to it or some graphic elements to it. You can do that all from your mobile device, right? And they actually have a Pinterest board, just to give you an idea of what other people have created. So you take a simple picture, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of images like these throughout Facebook, but this is how a lot of people create it. And what I love about it is that it happens all on the iPhone. So it's super quick, super easy to create, okay? The next one I'm gonna show you is Powtown. Now this one I don't know a lot about, but what I do know is that you can create animated videos. And last week, actually, I spoke with the Boston Foundation. And the question was, uh, for, for some people, we really can't tell stories and show people's faces for security and privacy reasons. Okay, So Powtown allows you to create animation. So they have really great examples of animated videos that you can create. And sometimes that's a great way to tell a story instead of using images. My favorite example of telling a story without using pictures, but still have that real emotional impact is Girl Effect. Okay, girleffect.org. If you get a chance, check that out and look at how their website is designed. Look at some of the videos that they have. It's all based on graphic images and animated explainer videos. The last one that I'll show you very quickly is Canva. Now, most of you know about Canva. What I love about Canva is that it gives you a visual content creation engine at your fingertips. And, and what does that mean? Well, let me give you a specific scenario. Let's say that you have your strategy and you say, well, great, we have to create a bunch of Facebook posts that we're going to publish in the news feed and we're going to use up these images and text and so forth. So this is our strategy. And we're also going to do this on Twitter and Pinterest. And this is our our uh, our messaging, and these are the type of images that we're going to be using, and this is how we want to engage our community. And, and we know this because of how our community is behaving now. We listen to them. We know what they want. We know what they respond to. We know what gets them amped up. Okay, so you've done all that homework. Uh, instead of saying, geez, I don't know how to use Photoshop, A, and B, saying, well, what's the image size for a Facebook post or a Facebook cover? I forgot. What's the, what's the best image size for Twitter? What's the best image size for Pinterest? So these guys take care of all that for you. You don't have to worry about that. So you simply click on whatever you want, Facebook post as an example, and it opens up a new tab where it's essentially, again, a visual content creation engine is how you look at it. So you essentially pick a layout, okay? And you can change and edit the text, you know, sale with our club. I'm just kind of demonstrating that you can edit the text. You can also add text. You can change the background image. You can even filter images. So I will filter this image. I'll make it a little bit darker so that maybe the text stands out. I can also make it blurry. That also helps text stand out. So if we have kind of a faint image of sailboats in the background. 
and we might want to make this these colors white. Okay, it might stand out a little bit more, but you get the idea. You can also add text elements too, which is really, really neat. So we can say, you know what, this element, we don't really like the text. Eh, we'll keep the text. We're going to just drag it up here and just place it up here for now. The anchor, don't really need the anchor. Although some of these elements, you can simply change the color of the element. So we might say, great, well, let's use that anchor. We'll take that text up here, this, this element, the date, we don't need it. But what we do want to uh, talk about is we have an image, we have an event coming up. Okay, so we want to, you know, use this element, make it a little bit smaller, change the background color. So I think that is it, I guess, just quick and dirty explanation of some of the most popular, powerful visual content tools.